One promising example of the achievements that can be made through a nationwide political consensus being implemented by the government to combat homelessness is a more progressive policy adopted by Nordic countries. For example, the Finnish government created a two-staged initiative that was implemented over the period between 2012-2015 with a particular focus on the reduction of long-term homelessness. A widespread reduction in short-term and long-term homelessness was achieved, as well as increased senses of social cohesion and greater housing security being experienced by low-income Finnish households. Inspiration for combating homelessness and housing insecurity policies can be taken from the Finnish program, as there are many similarities between areas for improvement. First, the high level of consensus and coordination between all levels of government and all major administrative bodies were a major achievement of the Finnish homelessness strategy. The implementation of this type of coordination in the context of India. The policies reviewed above derive from aspects of immigration laws, housing schemes and welfare provision and all have been created through a single axis, ungendered, racialized perspective. The omission of multidimensionality has subordinated the most vulnerable members of society and created even tougher environments for housing security to be achieved in an arena where existing inequalities are being constantly repeated and reinforced. The reviewed policies have identified a lack of constructive support available to the vulnerable in the UK. Furthermore, the knock-on effects of certain policies, whether related to immigration or state welfare provision, have also been identified, such as employment restriction, exclusion and confidence reduction, as well as their connection with housing security. The continuation of damaging austerity measures and intolerant treatment of minorities has created a hostile environment where upward mobility is inhibited, especially for those experiencing intersecting inequalities and their families. Restricted wealth and asset building capacity can be traced to intersecting histories of systemic racism, e.g., segregation, redlining, exclusion from public assistance programs, sexism, colonialism, and intergenerational poverty. Given these inadequacies of the reviewed policies in addressing such inequalities, the next chapter will offer recommendations for incorporating an intersectional lens into future policy design and implementation. Recommendations will be made to offer further support to those facing oppression that is not reducible to a single category, in order to provide them with more economic stability and housing security.
This chapter discusses the current anti-discrimination framework in UK law and then explores the ability of an intersectional approach to offer a more in-depth account of discrimination in relation to social structures. Next, the intersectionality policy process analysis created by Bishwakarma, Hunt and Zayacek 2007 will be presented as a foundation for intersectional policy creation. Finally, the Finnish homelessness strategy will be evaluated and recommended for policy adoption in the UK. Multiple discrimination and intersectional discrimination in the past, the UK's initiatives on tackling various types of discrimination have been through the implementation of single-dimensional equality and discrimination acts that deal with the inequalities of gender, race and class separately. In UK anti-discrimination policy, multiple discrimination was a recognition that people can experience discrimination on the basis of more than one identity category. The concept of intersectional discrimination is often opposed by policymakers and sidelined in favor of the more desirable, multiple discrimination, framework, due to intersectionality's complexity, as distinguishing a case of intersectional discrimination involves the recognition of a completely new ground of discrimination. Courts are unwilling to alter the list of the grounds of discrimination that is recognized by the law meaning that explicit exclusionary policies and practices are forbidden, yet the racialized gendered maldistribution of life chances remain the same or are worsened throughout time argues that racism has been defined so narrowly as to exclude it from blame in the most widespread adverse conditions facing people of color POC, to maintain the operation systems of white supremacy and heteropatriarchy. These operation systems have contended to reform law when resistance to the conditions of subjection is experienced, but just enough transformation to stabilize and maintain the status quo conditions that center the white propertied male subject and marginalize minority populations. The intricacy of the grounds of discrimination system and the overall organization of government and society in the UK makes the implementation of the intersectional discrimination framework extremely difficult.